Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. Till this point we have seen so many stuff right, we have worked with operators, we have worked with functions which are inbuilt, now it's time to do something big. No, when I say big I'm not talking about making games or something because see, it takes time okay. I know you people are learning Python so that you can work on big projects but it takes time, you have to go step by step. If you jump directly on projects you will get stuck so make sure that you know the basics. So in this video, let's try to make big code, okay? So when I say big code, till this point we were writing one line of code, now it will go for three to four lines of code, right? So that's a big step. But then where to type this code? Because see, whatever we have done till now, we were doing it on a interactive console. So the thing which we do, so which the IDLA which you are working with, this is your interactive console. And whatever you do here, it will give you the instant output, right? Example, if I say print, and then if I, if I pass a message here, which is, which is hello, and if I say enter, you got the output. This is interactive console, right? But then when you work on a project, you will write multiple lines of code. Where do we do it? Of course, you will not be using this console to do it, right? And that's why you will be creating certain files when you write a code. But whatever files I'm talking about, Think about this, when you type a document on MS Word, you get .doc. When you, when you want a material to read, so we prefer PDF. So for music, we use .mp3. In the same format, for Python, we have a file extension called as .py. So we have to create a .py files. How do we do that? There are certain steps. Example, you can open notepad, type the code, save it as .demo.py, doesn't matter what the file name is, and then you can run it. Otherwise, what you can do is, since we have our IDE available here, I will click on file and you can see we have an option of new file. So we can write a code here as well. Better, right? Okay, so let's write the code. Now simple code, of course, will go step by step. What we'll do, let's go with the simplest one, which is printing, hello, that's it. Nothing, nothing big, well print, hello, that's it. Now, what do you think? How will you run this code? Okay, now steps. Before running a code, you need to save the code. And how do we do that? You simply say Control S, of course everyone knows that. And then you can store this file anywhere you want. Maybe on Cloud Storage as well, maybe Google Drive or Dropbox. But here let's go with the cloud, uh, local one. Now I will store this file on desktop. You can store it anywhere you want, but is it easy to access will be desktop. So I will go to desktop and on desktop, I already have a folder called as Python codes. You can create that folder or you can just directly say on desktop that works in this folder. And then I will create a file. I already have a demo file here. Let's go for some different name. I would say this is my code. So file name is my code, but then the extension is very important. So the extension here is py. So I will go with that extension and I will say save. Now once you have saved your file, it's time to run this. So how do we run this file? Just go here on run and click on run module. This is not the only way to do it. There are multiple ways, but this is one way. Let's go with this way first. Click on run module and look at your code. So on the, cons on the console or on the shell, you got here output which is hello. It works, right? Do we have another way? Yes, we have. We can also do that from a command prompt. You can go here. This is your command prompt and you can run your code here. But how we do that? Now we can do that with the help of a command called as Python. Now if you remember, when you install Python in your machine and we have done that set path thing, if you remember, we can do that here. We can run that code here. Now first of all, before running a code, we have to make sure that you navigate to the folder where you have this file, which is Python. So I will navigate there. So I will say CD, desktop. Now once I'm, I'm in desktop, I will navigate to Python codes. And you can see I'm there in the folder now. And it's time to run this. How do we run this? We'll say Python and the file name. The file name is mycode.py. And that's it. Say enter. That's your output. Right? So it works. So you can run that on a shell or you can run that on, uh, on the command prompt as well. Your choice. Of course, when you work on a project, you will be using IDE, something like PyCharm or Eclipse because it makes much more sense there. But command prompt also works. Let's get back here. Again, we'll go to command prompt after some time. But... Time in, let's use this one, which is this editor. Now, once we got print hello, let's write a big code. Now, when I say big code, let's write a code for three to four lines. I want to add two numbers, that's it. So what I will do is I will say x equal to five and y is equal to six. So we got two values and then I want to add these two values. And how do we do that? We have done that before. I would say z equal to x plus y. And then once you got the addition, it's time to print it. Let's print it. So I would say print z and that's it save this file and now it's time to run this you can click on run and you can click on run module or 
shortcuts. You know, can you use that F5? So instead of going to run every time and run is because see, we, we, we want to save our time, right? Simply say F5 and you got the output which is 11. Yay, it's working. This is one place we can, where you can write a code. Otherwise, we can actually use an IDE which is there in our system, which is PyCharm. You can use any IDE which you like, okay? All the codes work on every IDE. It's just that everyone have their own preference. I prefer JetBrains products. PyCharm is good. I also love Eclipse. You can try that as well. If you want some other IDE which you like, which you feel is better, try that. Every code works on all the IDEs. Now, how do we work with PyCharm? It's very easy. Just search for PyCharm. Of course, I hope you have installed it before. And then when you open PyCharm, it is how it, this is how it looks like. So this is this is the prompt you will get. Now, how do we get started? So of course, when you are when you are working with PyCharm for the first time, you will not get this option of having a project already. You need to click on create new project. And then here I will enter a project name. We can say this is test project. So of course, when you make a project, you will be having a good name, but time being test project works. I will click on create and you can see we, we got PyCharm with our project. It takes some, it does take some time to create the environment for you. Now you can see we got our PyCharm and this is how it looks like. So when you, so on the left hand side, you can see we have a project section. So this is where you will see your project folders, your project files. This is where you will write the code. Of course, you don't have any option of writing code now. And this is how you will have a panel where you can run the code, where you can debug the code. And this is where you have, you know, multiple option example. If you want to change the setting, you can just go to file and change the setting. Like you want to change the font size, you want to uh, change the color theme because some people, they like dark themes, you know, so you can change that here. Again, we'll go through that. But before that, I want to create a file here. So what I will do is I will say right click and say new create a file you can create a file or you can create a python file because python file will give you the extension dot dot py i would say this is my code again click on ok and you can see i just entered my code look at the extension dot py is by default okay this works let's write the same code in fact i will copy paste the code because i'm lazy to type it copied paste okay you got your code here now if you want to change the font size it's very easy just go to file and click on setting you can see there's an option of editor font so i was at 25 and click on okay you can see we got the font size of 25 so it is much visible now now we need to run this file right how do we run this it's very easy just click on run and there's an option of run the file so you can just click on run my code and you can see the output it's 11. If you don't want to do it from here, you can just right click and say run my code instead of going up and down. And then next time, if you want to run this file, you can click here to run. If you, if you make any changes, example, if I want to change the value from six to let's say eight. And if I want to run this code, you can, I can simply click on run button there and it should work. You can see we got 13, so it, it works here. In fact, you know, there's one advantage of using an IDE, which is debug. Now, when you say debug, you can actually trace what is happening, you know, how, the, how your code is changing, how value is changing, you know, let me just do it for you. Let me show you a magic. You can actually see what is happening in the code. So first for that, first of all, you have to add a breakpoint. Now, what is breakpoint? Breakpoint is something from where you, 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 can, you can trace your code. So to get the breakpoint, just click on the line number. So if you, if you want a breakpoint here, just click there. Now, once you got your breakpoint, you need to go to run and click on debug. Now, when you click on debug, it will ask you for the file name, which is my code. And you can see it is, it is starting, it is, it has started the execution. Now, how do you go to next line? Because see, it is only on the first line now, right? So you just need to type F8. Otherwise, you can just go to run and say step over, but we will press F8. Now, the moment I press F8, now look at the variable section. So in the variable section, it says X is of type int and the value is five. You can actually track what is happening. In fact, on the, on the here itself, you can, you can see we got X colon five. Now, it, so for this code, it doesn't make any sense because we know the value. But when you, let's say if you're working on a big project and there's, there's, a, there's some bug in, let's say, let's say you have a file of thousand lines, okay? And there's a bug on line number 28. How would you know that is a bug on line number 28? So you have to trace, right? So maybe you know that there's something wrong between line number 20 and 50, but where? So you can trace, you know, you can put a breakpoint on line number 20 and then you can trace. Let's press F8 again and you can see we got Y values eight. Let's press F8. Now you can see Z values 13 and then you're printing Z value and that's where you got the output, right? So that's how all these things are working. We will be using PyCharm a lot. 
So maybe from next videos, we'll be, we'll be focusing more on PyCharm. Maybe we'll go back to IDLA for some code or maybe command prompt, but majorly we'll be using PyCharm. So I hope you enjoyed this video working with files and PyCharm. So if you have any question, let me know in the comment section. If you are enjoying this series, let your friends know about this series. So do give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not done yet. So that's it. Bye-bye.